Just to recap on our last episode, we had some mooring ball issues in Saba as one of our lines chafed through, and we worked on getting ready for our upcoming sail. We hitched a ride to the town of The Bottom and hiked to the highest point in all of the Netherlands. We went for a quick free dive session before we had to part ways with our friends Bo and Brandy, and then we set sail for Puerto Rico. Hi, we're Brooke and Gary. A year ago, we traded the American dream for our dream. Welcome to One Life. We found ourselves situated in Seba a small Dutch volcanic island in the Eastern Caribbean. But we hadn't been home to the States in about 18 months, so we had booked flights back to Florida from Puerto Rico. To get there, we would need to sail west for about 250 nautical miles, passing to the south of St. Croix. We would sail along the southern coast of Puerto Rico, all the way to Puerto Real on the west coast, where we had a marina reservation for one life. The conditions are so lovely right now that I am actually going to make us breakfast, which we don't do very often when we're on a cell, but I'm gonna give it a go. I went to turn on our propane, and I guess we're out of gas, so <laughs> Gary's gonna have to go switch it. When doing a multiple day sail, there are certain things, such as having propane to cook, that we just can't put off until we arrive. First time we've had to change our propane at sea, but I guess there's a first time for everything. Okay, give that a try. We're gonna try breakfast again. <laughs> Here's a peek at what it's like to spend a few days out on the ocean. After breakfast, we both lounged around in the cockpit, waiting for the fishing lines to go off. We just crossed the Sable Bank and fish on! Reeling in a fish under sail is always a challenge, but we've learned if we bear off the wind just a little bit, it slows us down enough for us to get the fish in. A little barracuda, so we're gonna let him go. We want a mahi or a tuna, maybe a wahoo. Just got buzzed by a Coast Guard plane. I heard motors behind us, and I turned around expecting to see like a motorboat coming up on us, but it was a twin engine Coast Guard plane flying real low, and they buzzed, they must have dropped down to like just a couple hundred feet, and they dropped down to check us out, I guess. They buzzed right by and kept on going, so. Don't know if they were out looking for something and thought we were what they were looking for or what, but pretty cool to see anyway. When traveling for miles without seeing anything but water, it was super cool to see the jet buzz by. And then back to watching the waves roll by. With our autopilot still broken, someone had to be at the helm at all times. So we decided on four hour shifts for the entirety of our sail. All right, it is time for my next watch. I'm gonna do the 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. shift and Gary's gonna get a break and nothing too exciting really happened. Uh, it's rolly as hell, so we're just bouncing all over the boat. <laughs> So not much fun, but we're making good time. We're averaging about six and a half knots, so that is great. And yeah, hopefully we'll get a good sunset. We always look forward to seeing the sunset before darkness falls upon us. I just got done with my first shift, four hours of steering. The swells are pretty big, so it's a little challenging to uh, keep the boat straight as we surf down them. I actually saw 11.2 knots as we surfed down one of them, but it's going pretty well. We're making good time. We're averaging like six, six and a half knots. 
It's uh, pretty rolly, but it's better than beating into waves and taking them over the deck, that's for sure. So Brooks on watch now. I'm gonna watch the sunset, make some dinner, and then try to get some sleep. This is our uh, sail away from the Eastern Caribbean, so I'm kind of uh, just starting to think about that and all of the great memories we have from visiting the Eastern Caribbean. It'll probably be quite some time before we sail back there, so it's kind of kind of sad to leave, but it's been everything we dreamt it would be. So, all right, let's try to cook some food in this. Ooh. Sometimes a simple task, such as reheating leftovers, can be quite challenging when underway. Even though the conditions weren't rough, the motion of the boat swaying from side to side prevented us from putting pretty much anything on the counter. Well, I'm gonna stay down here and eat my dinner. Let's, uh, let's see what Brooke's doing. Yeah, I think I'll just stay down here. Well, I just had a lovely dinner, and Brooke... Soaked! Absolutely soaked. She got to steer in the rain while I got to eat a nice warm dinner. Every time she comes on watch, it rains. It's just a thing. Free shower! <laughs> Even something as simple as taking out your contacts for the night becomes a real challenge when sailing offshore. Brace yourself against the wall and hold on to everything tight. I just got done with my 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. watch and I'm exhausted <laughs> and the swell is huge out there so it's not very comfortable right now but anyway we're still trucking along good morning it's the start of day two and it's uh, still pretty rough out we're surfing down waves hitting 10 or 12 knots. Swells probably two to three meters, but we're making good time. Brick's down there, hopefully getting some sleep finally. It sounded like she had a pretty uh, rough night watch, but we're doing okay. As the sun was rising, we could still see the glimmer of land lights from the island of St. Croix in the distance. Sunrise is always a welcoming sight. There are so many unknowns out here, and for some reason, things are always scarier at night. As soon as daylight hits, we put our fishing lines in the water. Day two, still just surfing down these big swells. We have 93 miles to go. It shows our arrival at 1 a.m., which is not good. <laughs> so we want to get there in daylight. It'll probably take us a couple extra hours once we start turning around the corner of Puerto Rico, and we'll probably get there just after sunrise. So I think we're looking pretty good. I want to catch a fish. So we have been rolling from rail to rail on these swells. So we can barely stand up inside. And I know the camera will not do these waves justice. Whee! But it is a lot. So we were doing four hour shifts, but because we don't have an autopilot, four hour shifts is a little too much. So we decided to do two hour shifts. Give our arms a break. <laughs> Gary's up there now. Yum! 
mushfuls. <laughs> we were still sailing downwind with just our head sail. The only sail adjustment we had to make so far was a reef or two based on wind speed. And before sunset, we made it to the coast of Puerto Rico and decided to change our plans a bit. All right, so since we were exhausted and we were making such good time and on our current track, it would have put us into the marina around 1 a.m. So we decided to get a few hours sleep and we'll start again at sunrise. But we found this cute little island and we dropped the hook. So we will continue on our journey first thing in the morning. But for now, eat and sleep. We are so tired. Good morning, it is 5 a.m. We got some sleep and it is time to finish our journey. So we've got 50 miles left. So we're gonna pull anchor and get going. We pulled anchor at Isla Caja de Morto and continued on our way to Marina Pescaderia in Puerto Real. It is quite amazing to see how quickly the condition of the ocean can change. The sea state calmed down tremendously overnight, which made smooth sailing the rest of the way for us. So Brooke came down to make breakfast and kicked on the water and said that the water pump just kept running. And then the bilge pump kicked on. So pretty sure it's the half-assed connection that I repaired with just a piece of hose because we haven't been able to get the fitting yet. So I'm gonna open it up and take a look and see if it's busted again. Yep, the little piece of hose that I put on there, the hose clamp popped off. So I'll get it reattached and then we should get the actual fitting to repair it once we're back in Florida. All right, it's reconnected. Let's see if that fixes it. Pump kicked on and turned off. See right here, I've spliced a piece of hose onto the plastic tubing with a couple hose clamps. And it seems to hold for a while, and then after a couple months it loosens up and pops off, but should be good for now. Sometimes just gotta fix things the cheap way until you can get the actual parts. All good? All good. All right, we have water again. <laughs> a beautiful sail this morning and we are almost at the southwest corner of Puerto Rico. We've got three lines in the water and we're hoping we get a fish for the last little part of our trip. So I'm suited up, ready to go back there and reel one in. I'm just waiting. Can you tell she's a little excited? She gets a little wound up when the fishing lines are in. <laughs> I mean, we haven't had, caught a fish in a long time and before we left Seba, I bought sushi wraps, so I'm ready for a fish. That's been super nice today. It's like 15 knots behind us and the sea state's a lot calmer than it was the last two days. So we're just cruising along, doing five or six knots, keeping Puerto Rico to our right. Lots of flying fish and lots of weeds, but no bites yet. There is something so peaceful about sailing downwind in the right conditions. After many months of beating east to get from Florida to the Eastern Caribbean, we were absolutely loving this westward sailing with the trade winds behind us. The fishing lines were out and it was Brooke's turn to reel it in this time when the line went off.
unfortunately, just another small barracuda. So we took our lure back and sent him on his way. There wasn't much else to do, but steer, soak in the sun, and just enjoy the conditions. Join us next time as we get one life ready to be alone at the dock while we fly back to Florida. Cheers and thanks for watching. A big thank you to all of our One Life crew. We have the most kick ass friends and family. To score some SV1 Life gear for yourself, head over to svonelife.com.